Uh, Johnny, good to be here with you, man. Good to be here with you as well. Yeah, we uh, we went to the Drake concert last night and made me think of that song. Uh, he gives you a shout out, Draft It. Yeah. That's uh, that's about you, right? Yeah, it was awesome. A cool, really cool experience to have one of your favorite artists be able to, you know, do something like that, send it to you before it ever comes out and hear it. It's just surreal. I got a chance to go last night as well, and I think it was one of his best shows that I've got a chance to see. Yeah, it was good. No, that was, I had, it's the first time I've been seeing him live. I guess it's, he hasn't toured in like five years, yeah. but no, that's awesome. What do you think? It was good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they put on a show. One of the things that's cool about LA is they're going to go all out. So just being out here made it that much, you know, that much better. But um, well, I mean, you were one of the first athletes that really got to know a lot of celebrities. Everybody kind of wanted to be around you. Everybody wanted your energy. It's kind of part of the story that I think a lot of people don't understand is you had so many people coming at you, so much opportunity. I don't know how you ever balanced it all in the first place. Yeah, I think I just got you know lost in that life where it is fun and easy to be able to go hang around celebrities and be in places like that and be able to meet you know all the people you've wanted to. Um, and it all happened really quick. But you know I'm lucky to still today be able to call a lot of these people friends or reach out if I ever need anything. So. You know, I feel very fortunate for the people I've got to meet and the people who have come into my life. Yeah, well, I mean, on top of that, you got the Texas Booster community and all that stuff, right? People down there being crazy. And uh, you were the national, or I know you were the Texas player of the year. Were you the national player of the year? So I believe you were the Gatorade player of the year, your senior year of high school. I believe right? so. I believe so. I know I left pretty soon um, after the end of that football season. I went straight to A&M early, but, you know, had a really good high school career that was really fun and, you know, got to win a lot of games, got to, you know, make a lot of plays and it's kind of where it all started. Yeah. How do you decide to end up at uh, a and I originally committed to Oregon um, and then decommitted from there when I got an offer from Texas A&M. I think I just wanted to stay in Texas, stay closer to home and you know it ended up working out. Yeah. I mean, of all the players I've personally watched over the last, you know, 15, 20 years in college football, I don't think there's any more exciting than you were. I remember watching the Alabama game when you, I think you threw for five touchdowns and over 450 yards and we were at a, we were at a like a, on a lake and they had a TV in the boat dock area. And we were just all doing, we just couldn't leave. We it. literally gave up boating for the day to watch that game. It was, it was a good times, good games. I mean, playing in the SEC was such a thrill to be able to do that. And, you know, awesome conference, went to an awesome school and, you know, college couldn't have been much better. Yeah. Do you have a favorite experience from college that you like to share? You know, I think, um, you know, just the Alabama game is one that always sticks out, but just being able to play any of those games in the SEC, I, you know, I think back in each and every one and I able to cherish that more than, you know, more than most of the other things that I went through in college. Yeah, well, and you seem to thrive on the competition. You know, I remember you giving the middle finger to opposing players or teams and a few of those things. I, I, I love the fieriness, though. It's so fun to play with a guy like that, that you know you can get behind. And you can tell your team like to do that as well. Yeah, I think, you know, being able to, you know, made some mistakes on the field a couple of times here and there. You let your emotions get the best of you. But for, you know, a large portion of my career, I think I did have the ability to thrive and have that energy that just gives off a, you know, a, a great vibe to be able to rally my guys around me and, and, you know, play with the passion and energy that needs to be there. Yeah. Well, I recently had on my podcast, uh, Manti Teo, and you guys both have had your documentaries come out. Yours came out a little over a week ago. Um, I guess, how has things been since that came out? How do you feel about the documentary in general? Yeah, I feel good. I think, uh, you know, it got a chance to show you know, my story for the most part, you know, not a full, deep, complete dive into it, but one that makes people reminisce and, you know, look back on the good times. And, and you know, it, it does paint a picture and a good story for, you know, people. So I've been thrilled with it. You know, I think it was an awesome opportunity for me to be able to do it, to be able to have a partner like Netflix and do it on there. Um, cool experience for sure. Is there anything you wish they would have added in that maybe they didn't? Um, I don't know. I think Ryan and his team did a really good job of doing it. You know, I think it you know, I wish probably for me, I wish it would have been lo longer to be able to go through some of the stuff. But, uh, you know, other than that, I'm really thrilled with how everything turned out. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that America loves, they love to cheer on somebody on the way up. Then they love to try to tear them down. But we love more than anything, a comeback story. Right. And I think that's why people have so much love in their heart for you. I mean, everybody cheered for you in one way or another, cheered for or against you. You're just one of those guys that has that aura and you polarize a room and all those different things. But um, as you've been kind of, you know, being in the spotlight again, big time after the documentary, how have people been um, with you? I'm sure a lot of people love that redemption story. I think, you know, for the most part, I, I would assume people have been very receptive. Yeah, it's been very receptive. I think I've had a lot of people that I've considered friends over the year that have reached out in a, such a positive way. Um, it's been all, you know, really positive and, and people being in my corner and being able to get some great messages. You know, everybody I've talked to really enjoyed it and really liked it and got a good, uh, 
you know, good, good to see people that still really knew me get the chance to see more about my life and, and what it was. So, you know, everything's been great. Um, you know, I appreciate all the support from everybody, not just people that I know, but, you know, fans, strangers, whatever the case may be, walking down the street. It's been, uh, it's been a little different to be back in the middle of the spotlight again. I bet. You know, I had a, a phase that I went through is kind of like a party phase. And I kind of honor that part, though, because it kind of helped me become who I am. And it's just one of those things you look back and like, yeah, I don't know if I do it the same way. But I did. I was really had a really good time. I loved it. I had a lot of fun. I'm just curious how you feel, you know, now about that time. Are you still like because I'm sure you had I mean, you probably had as much fun as anyone for a few years there. But how do you feel about it looking back on everything that, you you know, just what's your overall feeling? You know, I think more than anything, I would have liked to have a little more balance in what I was doing. You know, as good as I was on the football field, I think I equally started to get as good at, you know, doing the things off the field as well. Um, so, you know, I, I have regrets in the sense of letting my teammates down and not being a better teammate for my guys in, in that regard. Um, but, you know, I'm very unapologetically, unapologetically lived my life and was able to, you know, have a lot of fun, see a lot of the world and do a lot of things, you know, have regrets throughout that. But, you know, I think, you know, the bottom line is I learned so much more through the bad going on the way down than I ever learned um, on the way up. So, you know, I wouldn't be here sitting here today with the mindset I have or with the life that I have without having gone through those things that, uh, you know, people either frowned upon or were you know a little wild from the outside looking in. Yeah. If you could go back to 2012, what would you say to yourself? And, you know, work harder, you know, be a little wiser, take a path that's a little less traveled, I guess. You know, you can still do all those things that you wanted to do in moderation and, and walk a little finer line, you know. The guys who are the most successful are the ones that, you know, don't do what everybody else does. And you know, I wish I would have done that. Were there people that tried to like step in? Like how, how what, like in looking back, cause I think, you know, I have friends that, you know, there's kids don't listen or they're just in that world a little bit more than maybe they should be, like you've said. And I think everybody wants to know, like, what could have got through to you? What would have, what did you need? Or what could have somebody said to maybe change? I mean, I had unbelievable people around me and I've told people this, you know, a lot that have been around me. I don't think there's anybody on the face of the earth that, you know, I had LeBron in my corner. I had these people in my corner that were trying to get me on a straighter path and live a better life. And I think at that point in my time of my life, I felt like I just knew it all. You know, maybe I was one of those young, know-it-all kind of punk kids that, you know, was heading down that path no matter what. And you know, I had great people around me. I had great resources and I just wasn't, you know, receptive to that. My brain wouldn't allow me to, uh, you know, just wrap, wrap my mind around it, I guess. Yeah. How's your relationship with some of those people that were trying to mentor you before now? People like LeBron that you were close to? Yeah. I mean, we always don't get a chance to talk near as much, but, uh, you know, everybody throughout this has been really supportive and, you know, I've had people reach out that I hadn't talked to in a long time and it's been, you know, it's been great. Yeah. You got a chance to go back to A&M a couple of, was that last year or the year before? And um, what was that experience? Awesome. I go to probably four or five games every year. I got a chance to be inducted into the Hall of Fame yeah. there. So, you know, with two of my great buddies, great teammates. So awesome. I love it there. You know, I'm going to spend a lot of time there for the rest of my life. And, you know, I have nothing but great things to say about that school and that town. Yeah. Uh, you get drafted by the Browns. They had this history of just not being able to uh, develop quarterbacks, right? What was your feeling at the time? Were you glad to go to Cleveland? Were you glad to be going to the Browns? Or was you a little apprehensive because of that history that they you had? Know, I think I was happy about, you know, going into the NFL and being excited to take that next chapter in my life. And I think this is probably when, you know, being in Cleveland and being in that situation probably added to a lot of my, you know, struggles that started when I got there. You know, I think it was tough for me. I think it was tough on my mental health and, you know, a place I wasn't truly, truly happy with. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's all love. You know, I, I got a great opportunity to be able to go make something in my NFL career. And, you know, unfortunately, it didn't work out the way that I wanted to. But life goes on. Yeah. What do you do now for your mental health? I play a lot of golf. You know, being outside playing golf is unbelievable for me. And um, it's something that, you know, allows me to keep my mental sharp. I battle against myself. There's nobody else out there I can be mad at. It still gives me the athletic and, you know, competitive competitiveness that I want to have in my life. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I do a lot of, a lot of my time now. Yeah. You know, when I was talking to Manti, one of the things that uh, was so fascinating talking to him and why it's so, uh, why I want to have conversations with people like yourself is because in, unless you've been at that highest high, like it's hard to truly understand what else there is or what that come down is. Like even, you know, I have several interviews with professional athletes and people and your identity is attached to that thing. And then all of a sudden it's taken away. Maybe if you could try to help us understand, like, um, you know, what that experience was like, just going from literally the number one person talked about in the world to 
just kind of, you know, having to have your whole life on display and some of those things not being so pretty? Yeah, I think, you know, when I got famous, I wanted to be unfamous. And when I was unfamous, I probably wanted to be at the level that I got to. So, you know, it's a double edged sword. I think now my approach to life and the way that I live life is better suited for, you know, where I'm at and kind of staying out of the spotlight and being able to just live a normal life. I think it's better for me. I think it's better for my mental health. I think it's better for my life as a whole. So, um, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. Yeah. You could tell in the documentary, your dad has a lot of pride, you know, in, in your guys' relationship and everything. What do what, uh, what you and your dad, what's your relationship now? And how do you, um, what advice do you have for dads that, you know, or where your dad was like with you as a kid and you just, you have this amazing athlete that's just destroying the world, but also just trying to keep that father son relationship. Yeah. I mean, I think it's all about love. I mean, me and my dad have got a chance to rekindle our relationship, talk every day. You know, we get a chance to play golf, you know, 30, 40 times a year. You know, he's truly one of my best friends now. And, uh, you know, that relationship's come a long way. So, you know, I appreciate the love that he gave to me, the hard love that he gave to me. You know, and sometimes you have to let people learn the hard way if they're not ready to do it on their own. And um, I think that's what happened. And, you know, we're better for it today. Yeah, no, I totally feel that. Well, as um, a former athlete, now you kind of get to decide whatever you want to do with the rest of your life. What's next for Johnny Manziel? No, I'm going to be living in Scottsdale, playing a lot of golf, you know, living in a in an awesome place with great people. I'm going to be an uncle um, to my sister's two kids. I'm going to be a better, better brother, better son. Um, I'm just, you know living life, whatever I want to do. I have a great opportunity to, you know, do what I want. And I'm very blessed with that. I'm very happy and thankful for that. So, you know, we'll see what the future has to hold, but you know, nothing but good things, nothing but positivity for sure. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these athletes that are coming up now in college, the whole NIL thing, you're kind of one of the first ones that really pushed the needle in that. And you helped, I think you're one of the main, most important people that helped where these players get paid now. How would have things been different if that existed when you were back in college? You know, it's a tough what if to kind of go back and look at, but at the end of the day, I think college football is in a better place now because of it. At least these guys are getting to capitalize off that. So it's cool to have played, you know, whatever role I did in that. Yeah. And um, you did, you know, the autograph thing and all that. Did, at the time, did you, did, do you regret that? Or is that just kind of, I mean, you kind of were very outspoken that you were being taken advantage of. They were making all that money off of you know, your NIL and you just kind of tried to take a little bit of that back. But what do you think about it now looking back? No, I think I was just young. You know, I think that you, when you don't have money, it's what you want to have. And when you get it, you don't, you know, you're not as, you know, fulfilled as you may have thought you would have been when you got it. So I don't know, you know, made some mistakes. Wish I could have done some things differently. I don't know if that's one of them, but um, maybe. Yeah. I help mentor young men 13 to 17 is part of what I do. And I think one of the most important things you can do is find good friends. Um, looking back, um, do you feel like you had a group of friends that really um, were good for you? And what would have you done different? Or how do you how do you see that? I think I was loyal to my friends, you know, from the beginning to a fault. You know, my years in Cleveland, um, the crew that I had hanging around with me probably shouldn't have been around a starting NFL quarterback. And you know, I still love those people. I keep those relationships a little bit more distant now. But, you know, they know we're always friends and we're always going to be there. But at some point in time, you have to continue to move on you know, with your life, you know, life's all about who you hang around, and who you surround yourself with. So, um, you know, I've learned a lot from the things I've done in the past and have a better solid crew around me now. Yeah. Well, when you won the Heisman Trophy, I mean, first freshman to ever do it. Take us back to that day. Was that? Yeah, unbelievable to be able to walk out into Times Square and see your face as a 19 year old kid on a billboard um, in Times Square. That trophy, that fraternity, just be welcomed into that. It's uh, it's all world. It's great. Yeah. Well, that was, um, again, I remember that day because Manti Taylor, again, was I had a relationship a little bit, been following his career. And, um, you know, that was just such an epic moment when, I mean, first freshman ever and you had this defensive player. And um, from there till the draft, uh, I'm guessing you had a lot of craziness coming into your life. Uh, looking back on that, what advice do you have for players going through that same situation? I guess you didn't go into the draft till a year later, I guess. Mm -hmm. But just that time between when your career ends and the draft, what do you, like, what do you do? Because you ended up having one of the best pro days of all time. You, you know, really in the documentary, it showed how you got yourself prepared. Um, was that the time you were probably the most laser focused in your life? Um, no, I think after my Heisen year, when I came back to um, school, I went and was training in San Diego. And I think that's when I really started to see, you know, my game go to a different place where I started to see the ball come out of my hand different. I started to train my eyes better. 
um, to be able to really work and, and hone in some of these skills. So between that and the pro day, you know, were two times definitively in my life where I knew that I could pretty much throw the football wherever I wanted. Yeah. Well, such a cool thing to be able to do, man. You've lived a crazy, amazing life. What's the best part about being Johnny Menzel? Man, uh, just the people, my friends, my family, you know, the life I've got to live is pretty awesome. You know, I'm very lucky. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the best part about being me is. I don't know. Life's good. It's good, man. It's good to hear that, you know, things are going good. I had a restaurant in Vegas. You've came by a few times. I ran into you there once. You probably went around. It's called Moss Por Favor. Yeah, and of course. Was, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was just fun to see you and see where you're at today and, and be able to have the conversation. But um, I think, again, you know, from somebody like yourself, so many times we see somebody from the outside and we think everything's going on perfect. When you were going through the, the best of times, um, was there a level of it that was it as good as it looked or was a level, level of it that maybe you felt empty still? And what do you think was missing if it was or what? Just, I'm just trying to understand, like so few people have that experience in this life to truly understand what it was like in that moment for you. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, looking back on it now, it's almost hard to even pinpoint exactly, you know, what it is. But, you know, special nonetheless. Yeah. Got you, man. Well, appreciate you being here and uh, taking some time. Thank you, bro. Good luck with everything. Appreciate it. Fun to watch your journey. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, John. Thanks, man.